live from Midtown Manhattan, breaking analysis from The Cube at Big Data NYC. Made possible by Hortonworks, we do Hadoop, and Plan Disco, Hadoop Made Invincible. And now your co-hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone to Big Data New York City. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, in some cases create our own event, Big Data NYC, which is here live in New York. We are covering all the big data action, news analysis here and in New York City around big data, also covering Hadoop World and Strata Conference right across the street. So uh, very exciting uh, news segment here. I want to uh, bring in Dave Vellante, uh, co-founder of Wikibon, my co-host of theCUBE, and Jeff Kelly, big data analyst, to, to break down the news and analysis in the past two, three days. And of course, this news segment is brought to you by Hortonworks and Wandisco. Uh, they do Hadoop, nonstop Hadoop. These are the, the supporters of theCUBE, and have done a great job of supporting our independent analysis here at uh, Big Data Week, Big Data NYC, uh, Hadoop World Strata Conference. So guys, let's just jump right into it. Uh, Dave, I want to get your take on it. We saw a lot of news. Um, a lot, a lot of conversations, and a lot of, a lot of let's, let's talk about the news first, then we'll get into the conversation, what I call conversation news, the scuttlebutt, the hallway conversations, what we're hearing in the streets, what we're hearing from the people at the parties, kind of like the back channel. So let's get to the, to the front, front channel, which is the news. What are, you, what are you seeing as the key news? Well, I mean, it's a, you're seeing a lot of themes, obviously, at uh, Hadoop World and, and Strata and Big Data NYC. It started maybe a year ago. Everybody talking about real time, bringing SQL to Hadoop. You're hearing less about bringing SQL to Hadoop. I mean, I think people are generally you know, comfortable with that, but a lot more about real time with Hadoop 2 uh, and, and Yarn. We're starting to see increasing number of use cases uh, and a much more broadening <clears throat> of the applicability of Hadoop. So that's sort of one thing. This whole meme of we got to make Hadoop Enterprise ready, which started probably two or three years ago when big guys like EMC started to get into the business and IBM. I think people are getting more and more comfortable applying Hadoop to specific use cases for the enterprise. So there's the governance, the sec <clears throat> security, the performance, the scalability aspects are you know, clearly starting to, to improve as the ecosystem matures. Uh, you're seeing some very interesting uh, battle lines occur, swim lanes, whatever you want to call them, um, uh, with regard to not only the distribution and the base infrastructure, but also the middleware and the functionality on top of that base infrastructure, the analytics platforms on which you can build applications. And I think the other thing is we still see a lack of commercial off-the-shelf applications in this community, which is slowing down adoption uh, because the skill sets aren't there and the heavy lifting has to be done in-house. So, so my take on the news, uh, Jeff, when we get your analysis and perspective, just to kind of run down, to me the top stories here is uh, obviously Hortonworks, Data Platform 2.0 was big announcement. Uh, they did that prior to the show, kind of uh, on the eve, kind of uh, to try to pre-activate the audience prior to Cloudera's big announcement, which is the Data Hub. Those are, to me, the two significant major announcements at a platform level. You are seeing the emergence of data engines or data platforms. Uh, uh, Cloudera calls it the data hub, Wartonworks calls it the data platform. Um, kind of different approaches, but the same naming, but the same approach, enabling platform, we're seeing a lot of decoupling of key subsystems, MapReduce and Yarn, enabling applications and, and, and on top of it to do more. So that's, to me, the big, the big story right there. Uh, two, the launch of Clear Story. We're going to have Sharmila Mulligan on uh, shortly. Um, she's old school, goes back to the Netscape days. She is a, a serious entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, great executive. We're going to have her on the Cube, Silicon Valley uh, a legend. Uh, um, also, uh, Continuity had some news, um, Splunk had some news. Um, Pivotal announced. We had Pivotal, we had HP. There's a lot, a lot of stuff going on, and, and a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of little announcements, but the, the second wave of the story is the business BI market. And to me, this, the, the, the story of the business intelligence changing and morphing into a modern view. You're seeing the data warehouse concepts kind of taking a center stage, backstage to the center stage of BI. And I want to get you guys to take on it. Do you see the same thing? You're seeing data platforms, not necessarily data warehouses. You know, it's, it's interesting. Jeff, remember the term decision support? Nobody uses that term yeah. anymore, DSS. It's almost, I almost feel like BI is going to go the same way. Do we need a new term for, for business intelligence, you know, business insight? Maybe, yeah, well, you know? I think business, business intelligence is a loaded term. It comes with a lot of baggage. So, yeah, I don't think that term necessarily is one that we're going to hear a lot in the, in the long term. Uh, what's the new term? Uh, I like, uh, you know, Clear Story, as you mentioned, John, just launched, and they're, they're calling it data intelligence uh, rather than business intelligence. Uh, but it is about getting, uh, based, whatever you call it, it's about getting uh, data and insights into the hands of end users uh, so they can actually make better decisions. So I think that's, that's clearly a theme we're seeing. 
Um, you know, some other things, uh, hearing a little bit of talk about the cloud. Um, not as much as I, th I think I thought we'd hear about. Um, AWS made an announcement today. They're up, up, uh, updating their platform, their uh, Elastic MapReduce platform to support uh, Hadoop 2.0. Um, you know, we see Microsoft uh, announced the general availability of HD Insights, uh, which is their, uh, Hadoop uh, their Hadoop offering based on the Hortonworks distribution. Um, so that's an area where I thought we would probably see a little bit more action um, because you know, the cloud obviously offers the ability to kind of take, abstract away all that complexity of running, running Hadoop um, and really let, let customers focus on what they do best, uh, you know, their core business rather than being in the business of, of uh, running you know, Hadoop clusters. So um, that's another area to keep an eye on. Uh, but you know, ultimately, this is about making better decisions with data. And so what, what I like about this show this year and the, and the vibe here is that that's really what the conversation is around. It's not about the guts of the technology uh, inside of Hadoop. It's about how do we use this data to make better decisions. And related to that, how do we make sure Hadoop is enterprise grade, security, always available, et cetera. So that's kind of where I see the conversation going. You know, Dave, Dave brings up decision support. I love that. I just did a little tweet in the crowd chat. And, and we've talked to us in the past with uh, about this old terms, you know, data processing, you know, the DP department was the punch card days, the old mainframe days, data processing, decision support. These are old glass house for the people, the young people don't know that means that was where they kept the mainframes. Uh, but again, these concepts are rearing their heads again in a new way. You know, what's the old expression? Uh, uh, same wine, new bottle, but you know, uh, you know, data processing and decision support is, is now data platform advanced analytics, right? I mean, do you see, I mean, I mean, is this the software mainframe, Dave? We talked about this when Moritz yeah, well, launched, uh, you know, the, the, the map in 2010 when he was at VMware. You know, it's the other thing, so <laughs> I remember we were at the Tableau conference earlier this year, and Christian Chabot, a very dynamic individual, CEO of Tableau, when he, whenever he talks, he's a very fast talker, he's, he's really excitable, and when he talks about the old data warehousing and decision support and BI business, he just slows down and puts it in the bucket. And I really do think that's apropos. Uh, I think that we do need new terms. I mean, d uh, data intelligence is interesting, I like it, but you know, it's all, about, it's all about being able to take action on that insight that mm -hmm. you're getting. And that seems to be what's missing, right? Or, and to me, it's like Bill Schmarzo's quote that he has in this book, this whole notion of being able to put what did he say here? The challenging and conventional thinking regarding how non-analytical business users should be using analytics. I mean, that is the holy grail. Mm -hmm. And if, frankly, if the big data business doesn't achieve that, it's going to end up just like the promises of the decision support and yep. business intelligence and enterprise data warehousing business. A lot of money was made, <clears throat> but ultimately ended up being a reporting right. platform. I think, I think one of the keys is for, you know, there's definitely value in, in a dashboard and reporting, and, and we're still going to see the need for that, but really it's about putting intelligence in context for end users. So whether that's a recommendation engine, next best, best action, rather than uh, a user simply kind of digging through some data. Put it in context of what they do every day. Make it easy for them to understand uh, you know, what's the next best option for me. What, what decision should I make? What, sh ex what action should I execute? Rather than, okay, I see a dashboard and it gives me some interesting you know, insights, but in the in the day-to-day -day flow, how do I, how do I make a better decision? We had one of the guys on yesterday talking about visiting, you know, visiting a hotel chain. They were talking about instrumenting the entire hotel, having sensors everywhere, key card swipes, understanding who went to the, the gym, what they're eating, so they can personalize <laughs> the experience. Another hotel thinking, well, why would we do that? Well, which one's going to win from a competitive <laughs> standpoint? Right. right. And it's, a, it's a immensely uh, complex uh, problem, to, not to crack. Um, it's what we're seeing in the industrial internet, but at scale, forget one hotel. Think about a chain of hotels. Think about a city. So um, that's the promise, I think, of big data. We're oh. years from that. But okay, guys, that's I want, the direction we're moving. I want to get your perspective on now the scuttlebutt, what's the hallway conversation. So, whichever, we'll start with you guys. You were out scouring the landscape yesterday. We've been on doing the analysis. Dave and I have been doing the cube. Um, we had our party last night um, for the cube party. Guys, what's the scuttlebutt? What are you hearing out in the hallways, uh, in the streets? What are people talking about uh, this week at Big Data NYC? Well, I mean, there's definitely talk <laughs> about how uh, you know, these infrastructure, the, the, the Hadoop platform wars are far from one. You know, this is not very uncertain what's going to shake out here. Uh, so that's one. The same thing with the NoSQL. It's like eight zillion, well, how did Sean Conley describe it? The thin slices of prosciutto <laughs> is, uh, is how many, you know, NoSQL database platforms are out there. So, so there's a lot of uncertainty as to how that's going to shake out. 
uh, there's a lot of this we heard from, you know, some scuttlebutt from some of the application guys saying, you know what, I don't need all this stuff that these guys are trying to sell me. I'm building it in my own. I'm building my own database. I'm building my own security. I'm building my own data integration platform. I'm building my own ETL. I don't need these companies. Now, also here in the distro, I mean, we're hearing people saying, hey, you know what, I have, distros are like a commodity. So are you hearing the same thing? I mean, uh, you're, what you're basically yeah. saying is I yeah, want flexibility. I think, I think people agree that distros are the commodity, but still, on they top want, of that commodity, there's money to be made. So to, to, Sean Conley made a really interesting point about the GigaOM article, because Cloudera was basically saying, hey, we lost nothing from that deal. And he said, oh, yeah, you did. You lost the right. Essentially, he didn't say these words, but I'll use my words. You lost the right to have maintenance revenue for 100 years. That's what you lost, right? That's big business. So, still some very interesting business model sort of shakeouts going on, scuttlebutt. I don't know, Jeff. Yeah, well, here? don't, anybody who says the kind of distribution war is over or, or uh, you know, it's, there's not, it's not a fiercely competitive market is, uh, that's inaccurate. Um, what the scuttlebutt for me is how fierce this competition is. <laughs> um, you know, if you, a lot of off the record conversations about different vendors talking about one another um, and, you know, trying to obviously, uh, you know, put their company uh, kind of at the top of the heap, but uh, this is very competitive. Yeah, it's, it's it, clear. It's a little snarky at times. It's, it's. I mean, it's <laughs> one of those. It's one well, of those it's markets. a lot. It's a lot nicer now than it was. You know, two years ago when Hortonworks came in. You know, rubbing elbows in there, sharp elbows, and Cloudera had the lead. And you know, Cloudera was the pioneer. And, and I got to say, I like what Cloudera is doing. I think. You know, they're just, you know, laying it out there. And one of the things, like and I said this on the intro yesterday, what Cloudera is doing that I like is they're, they're basically showing the world and being completely transparent about their business model. There's no head fake. Now, they, I still think that that's ingenuous for the CEO saying that Hortonworks is not, disingenuous to me to say that Hortonworks is not a competitor. That's ridiculous. Of course they're a competitor. Um, I think what they're trying to say is um, if they weren't a competitor, then why is only mentioned Storify, in the, I mean, uh, Spotify. Spotify in these, in these uh, conversations. The point is, they're just laying out their path. And I think what they've done is successfully, in my mind, with Cloudera, and I talked to Amr about this, Amr, Amr Awadala, is that they're a platform. So, you know, Cloudera's vision initially, Dave, was to be a platform. And uh, when they were pioneering, they didn't have a lot of the politics because they were the only game in town. Yeah. Uh, in, enter EMC with Pat Gelsinger, enter Hortonworks with the Yahoo spin out. So, so certainly it's gotten competition. Intel's now in there. So what you're seeing is Cloudera putting a stake in the ground. And they need to do that, and I think clarity is, is, is key. And uh, you know, I think this is not a pivot in a, in a major way. It's just more of a, a direction clarification. Well, and I think that's positive. And the data hub. Some people are criticizing the name. I kind of, I don't mind it all. I think it's fine. Data platform hub. It's, I'm glad they didn't call it a data warehouse. But I think what they're trying to say is this is the modern data warehouse. That's a viable strategy. Okay, very very viable. Different than Hortonworks. So I think that's where they're coming from. See, I don't from. think it's that, uh, it really, if you take away some of the labels, I don't think it's that different. Um, they're both trying to serve as a platform to enable all sorts of type of applications on top of it. I don't see how it's different. They're all doing the same thing. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the <laughs> model's different, the business model's different, but the, the end result is a platform Well, the interesting thing to me about data. what John was saying is that Cloudera basically came out and said, well, hey, we compete with, with Pivotal. Those are the guys that we're competing with, and, and IBM. And so here's the interesting little scuttlebutt that I picked up last night was that you know, the, the EMC guys were saying, you know, hey, it, we, we, we've seen this movie before with VMware where the spin out, Pivotal, is very hands off. You know, we actually have a hard time sometimes doing business with Pivotal. We're, 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 get, we're aligning with Cloudera and Hortonworks <laughs> because, you know, because really the Pivotal guys are, you know, aligning with our competitors. And so, so that was kind of interesting. But at the same time, you, Jeff, were at the NYSE and there were a lot of customers there. Guess where those customers came from? Exactly. They were reeled in by EMC sales reps. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's a big advantage that Pivotal has with, with regard to access to that customer base. And, and same thing, obviously, for IBM times 10, right? Right. Um, it's interesting because, you know, obviously EMC, huge, you know, storage is their business. Um, Hadoop, something like Hadoop can undercut that business to some degree. So it's interesting um, and give EMC credit for, you know, spinning off Pivotal and, and, and really investing in that company and, and uh, you know, pushing leads their way uh, that could in the long term potentially impact their storage business, but this is kind of what EMC does. They saw virtualization, they spun out VMware, they see uh, big data, spin out Pivotal, um, smart strategy. So John, you're a, you are the master networker, you're out in Silicon Valley, you're hearing stuff around the street here, what do you, what's your take on all this? On, uh, on what? 
No, the inside scuttlebutt. What's going on? But, uh... Well, I mean, on, to me, there's a lot of threads. One, I think the BI market is, is exploding. I think, to me, the scuttlebutt is everyone's racing to be that layer of business intelligence, because to me, that's the search engine of the future. It's, a, it's, a, it's an abstracted away uh, notification network. If you look at big data origination, the one that Jeff Hammerbacher originally was, was sour on, you know, recommendation engines for ad, ad servers, that's essentially what you're going to see with big data with BI. Basically, uh, real time, semantic analysis where things are just happening for users in the UI, in the, that's a search paradigm, that's a discovery, that's a user experience. To me, that's the modern BI. I think that's the secret, public secret in Silicon Valley and the venture capital community is they're putting the big bucks down, heavy funding, Platforma, they all get this game, they're all driving to that. Underneath that, it's, it literally is the platform wars, but it's, 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 it's nice, I mean, it's, it's a clean environment right now because the market's growing so fast. So the people I talked to, Dave, said, hey, you know what, there's no real competition, there's posturing, but at the end of the day, it's a massively growing marketplace, and the total TAM is exploding, as you guys pointed out. Yeah. So, so yeah. when you have growth markets, you don't squabble over fruit on one tree. There's plenty of fruit to go around, plenty of beachhead. So to me, that's the key uh, scuttlebutt going on. So, hey, you know what? There's so much growth, and it's so early. I, I don't <laughs> yeah. know, Joe. I, I, I agree with you, but I still see a lot, I still see a lot of squabbling. But nevertheless, um, the other thing I wanted to point out, you know, th this whole idea of BI, I mean, look, this is... What, you know, this is what humans do. They take in information, try to process it, and make a better decision based on it. That's what we've been doing since you know, the dawn of time. So this is just, you know, that's what BI is all about. And now it's a new approach. We've got more data that, are, uh, th that we can work with. Um, but it's really an age-old problem. Take in information, process it, make sense of it, and take an action. Well, the other thing that's, I think, really interesting here is we, talk, we touched upon it earlier is the whole NoSQL database space. I mean, you go back, we, we've talked about this a lot. In 1990, you couldn't have predicted SAP was going to win in the ERP battles. In the, in the 80s, you know, you couldn't have predicted that Oracle was going to win in the, in the database battles, and it's really hard to predict who's going to win in the NoSQL battles, and the wild card here, yet again, is open source, with, with whether it's HBase or, you know, pick, pick your, your platform. Who's got the momentum? Obviously, Mongo has the momentum. You got Datastax do, doing, doing pretty well. You got niches like Aerospike, you know, tucking into you know, things like ad serving. Mm -hmm. um, you got a, 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 a Cumulo as well, mm -hmm. you know, tucking into, you know, government and, and other financial services. And, and then like dozens and dozens and dozens of other. I mean, how do you pick a winner there? Can you pick a winner? Does there um, have to be a winner? I mean, a lot of those are yeah, open source technology. I think there will be a winner. Well, I, you know, they're open source know. technology and different companies can choose the flavor that works for them best. Database is infrastructure. So at some point, you know, it consolidates, mm -hmm. I, I think. Um, I just don't, I mean, can the market support, I mean, how many are there? Oh, well, 30? <laughs> probably, I don't know, I think I just heard a new one spring up, so yeah. yeah. So can the market support that many? I mean, I would suspect that as standards develop, something's going to emerge. DynamoDB, I mean, a lot of key yeah. value stores out there. There doesn't need to be 30 key value stores. Yeah, and then we're seeing kind of the, the new SQL, uh, kind of the merging of some of the NoSQL and SQL uh, type of databases. So yeah, there's, there's, there's quite a few out there. Um, and guys like Cloudera and Hortonworks, for that matter, you know, they're 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 playing their their they're playing the field, but they're still really got the thumb on the scale for HBase because mm -hmm. they know if they can do a better job integrating with HBase, they're going to get the downstream residuals. Right, guys, well, I want to get so I want to get your take on a couple of things. You brought up the whole you know arrow spike in memory. I want to get to that in a second because that brings up the SAP conversation. One of the big themes that we talked about yesterday is the role of these big guys coming in. So Hadoop is obviously maturing, it's, it's been validated, the use cases are presenting themselves, starting to see some scalability happen, that's a very positive for the industry. Um, but you're seeing the big guys come in. We, we saw Boyd Davis last night from Intel, uh, we saw SAP here. So guys, well, I want to get your take on, on the big guys um, and their role with Hadoop. Hadoop is continuing to be validated. Are they embracing it wholeheartedly? Um, are they integrating it in? Obviously SAP has HANA, uh, Vishal Sikha had announced some big stuff at TechEd, um, and obviously you're seeing with Cloud Foundry and Pivotal, you know, this legacy vendors coming in that have an agenda. And, and they, quite frankly, it's clear, they, it's their own stuff. So what, what's your take on the, the big guys like SAP and others coming into space? Well, from SAP's perspective, uh, I, re I remember a couple of years ago at Sapphire, I think it was probably 2012, uh, some of the executives there really uh, poo-pooing, if you will, for lack of a better term, NoSQL and Hadoop. Um, they've changed their tune a lot on that. They are now, uh, I think they now recognize that Hadoop uh, has an important role to play in the modern data infrastructure. The, they've established uh, partnerships with some of the big uh, Hadoop players, including Intel, as a matter of fact, um, so SAP, I think, has realized that 
Hana is not the be all end all in terms of uh, big data. Uh, it plays a very important role. Um, we've done some research, uh, our David Floyer's done a lot of research around um, HANA and use cases, um, and it, it, it fits, uh, it, it solves particular business problems for, for SAP users. Um, but I think SAP is finally realizing Hadoop and other technologies have to be part of the mix. Um, Intel, interesting, uh, you know, when they launched their Hadoop distribution, some of us were sort of, uh, you know, scratching our heads. Um, hardware company getting into the Hadoop distribution business was not something uh, I don't think a lot of us expected. Um, but to their credit, you know, when they launched that, they did put some significant muscle behind it. Uh, I've talked to some of the engineers that, are, that are work on the project, and they're, they're sincere and they're working hard uh, on things like uh, security, on making things like Hive uh, perform better. Um, they've kind of gone quiet a little bit over the last six months. Uh, I haven't heard too much about them. Uh, in the Hadoop space specifically, um, but one of the other things they're focusing on, uh, you know, is the Internet of Things, the industrial internet, whatever you want to call it, partnering with uh, Pivotal and GE. So um, I think we're going to start to see more focus on that industrial internet uh, meme, if you will, probably from Intel. Dave, what's your what's your take? Well, and then uh, we haven't talked much about Oracle, right? Um, so Oracle essentially is a similar thing, right? They ignore, criticize prevaricate and then sort of embrace. Uh, Oracle's announced a key value store. You know, obviously the big question that we sort of bat around all the time is, is you know, is Oracle going to buy a cloud era and, you know, just sort of stomp their way into the market as oftentimes o Oracle does. I, we had a really interesting conversation with David Richard yesterday in the Cube. He is of the belief firmly that there will be another billion dollar software company that emerges from, from this space. I hope he's right, just because it means more innovation and more interesting things. Um, but, but I'm fearful that he's not right in that um, the large companies will start absorbing these firms. So the big question is, are they acquisition proof? So if some of them get to IPO and they can you know, boost their valuations, like a Tableau uh, has and like a Splunk is, is doing, they maybe create an environment where they are acquisition proof. If that happens, then some of these big companies really could get disrupted. Uh, and that's really where I think this, this gets interesting. Okay, guys, great analysis. Uh, that's our news break here, brought to you by Hortonworks and Wendisco. This is theCUBE, Big Data NYC, covering all the action in New York City, Hadoop World across the street with Strata Conference, all the action happening here in New York City this week around Big Data. It's theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.